This is the Free Heal Life Podcast, episode number 119. I'm your host, Josh Madsen, coming at you from the Free Heal Life shop in Salt Lake City, Utah. And I hope you all had an amazing World Telemark Day, 8th annual this past Saturday. Hopefully you were partying the entire weekend and enjoying yourselves because that's what it's all about. So wanted to kick it off with that. Uh, super excited that we've been doing that for so long and so great to see all the folks that reached out uh, to us, to me directly, and just thank you for participating. Uh, next year, uh, we've got the first Saturday in March, World Telemark Day, Northern Hemisphere, and then uh, coming up, first Saturday in September, that's going to be World Telemark Day in the Southern Hemisphere. If you're someone down south below the equator, reach out if you want to uh, help us fire that one up. Argentina, Chile, uh, New Zealand, Australia. I kind of hesitate. I was about to say Brazil. Not really any skiing in Brazil. Beautiful country, but not any skiing. <laughs> I just think about that when I start rattling off uh, South America. So anyways, uh, happy past World Telemark Day. It was great. So what that means, we're heading into the spring. It's March. And uh, we have our closing day set for April 2nd. We will be closing down the retail shop. So you can be looking for all sorts of goodies that we are getting out of the shop, out of the retail space. And we're going to be starting to move into what we do in the spring and summer. The podcast will continue. Uh, I have plenty of guests lined up and plenty of conversations and plenty to talk about. So I hope you will all stay tuned as uh, we head into that. And it's going to be great. All right. Well, today I've got a, a couple guests today. Uh, one is my friend CD, uh, CJ Cochia from Telemark, Colorado. He's back on. He's uh, one of the brains behind Telemark, Colorado, along with his buds, Brian Strickland and Eric Jensen. But he's rolling solo today, repping the TC crew, and uh, he did, however, bring along two other people uh, to chat with us. So we've got Taylor T2 Henham. He was born in New Hampshire, grew up at a small hill called Granite Gorge, and uh, T2 moved to Salt Lake last year to work at Free Hill Life and improve his telemark turns. They are also joined by Curtis DeVore who's uh, since a young age had a passion for photography and filmmaking. Growing up near Lake Tahoe, he always appreciated the outdoors and enjoyed using a camera to capture his favorite moments in life. He then attended Colorado Film School, where he obtained a film degree emphasizing in cinematography. We had such a great chat about Telemark, Telemark Colorado's movie, Why Not?, uh, that they dropped this past fall. All three of these guys were involved in the production in different ways, and I thought it would be great to get them all together for a chat about it all. So please welcome to the show, CJ, Curtis, and T2. All right, gentlemen, welcome to the Free Hill Life Podcast. How are you doing? Uh, not too bad, Josh. Thanks for having us, having me once again here. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. yeah doing, well. doing great. <laughs> You are, uh, CJ, you're, I think this is like number three, dude, I think. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is good. So I guess uh, as always, when we do these funky, weird, there's like four people on the telephone, the telephone on the, I don't, whatever the, on the, <laughs> on the photograph here. On the, <laughs> and then we're going to videotape afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can sync it up. It's fine. So we've got, uh, I guess everybody let's do quick introductions real quick. Just names so people can recognize your wonderful voices since we do not have video. Sure. Uh, this monotone voice right here is, is CJ and yeah, you're right. This is my third time on here. So I feel like I guess one, you haven't learned a lesson about, you know, not having me and keeping me on here, but, uh, yeah, two, everyone's going to get used to this by now, I suppose. Well, welcome um, back. Uh, T <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I messed that one up, but, uh, I'm T2. I'm, uh, first time on the podcast, so stoked to be on. <laughs> Long time listener, also first Taylor time Hannum. guest. <laughs> 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 yeah. T T T Taylor Hannum, otherwise known as T2. <laughs> Uh, also works at the Free Hill Life Shop, which is 
kind of weird that we haven't had you on already. So I'm glad that we're we're tying you in here, old T2, getting you on, getting it, getting yeah, it rolling. Yeah, I'm happy to be on. Yeah, no, I'm stoked. And then uh, we've got Curtis. Curtis, give us a little yep, intro. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm Curtis DeVore, um, and it's my first time on as well, and I'm not a telly skier, so I just kind of got dragged into this one. <laughs> <laughs> totally <laughs> shouldn't have, dis- you shouldn't have disclosed Jeez. that. That's terrible. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, we didn't try this again. Actually, I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's start over here, gentlemen. Uh, oh, no. let's see. That's number. I'm trying to think. I think we've had, you are number three of alpine skiers no snowboarders or mono skiers have been on the podcast yet so <laughs> i think we had we had todd harilla our buddy who helps us make skis and then we had patty o'connell from uh <laughs> oh, yeah. the well-known the well-known ski rider patty o'connell so yes so you're following up on that but uh okay cool well <laughs> We can get into a little more introductions. I know that's that's kind of a weird way to start. I probably should have just said your said your names, but I like when people can hear your voices, <laughs> know what's going on. And um, anyways, yeah, I wanted to uh, CJ and I talked. If if for those of you listening out there, if you haven't listened to um, CJ on the podcast before, he's uh, one of the guys that runs Telemark Colorado, and they are an amalgamation of all sorts of radness uh, that includes Telemark. Uh, uh, content and events and gatherings and merchandise and last year oh and i should mention kings and queen of the heel video competition and last year they put last year they filmed and put out uh this season why not which is uh was their first uh stab at taking uh telemark movies to the next level so that's kind of what got us all together today. So, um, okay, so we got CJ, Telemark, Colorado. Old T2 is one of the Telemark skiers in Why Not, which is their movie. And then Curtis, I believe, is the, uh, should we call you the principal cinematographer? Is that like... Uh, the yeah. Te- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very- yeah, see, yeah. Me I'll sign off on that. <laughs> <laughs> you did it. I, I am reading. I was reading in your bio that you do have a film degree. So that is, that's legit. So I, I, f- I feel like I should, uh, you're not just rolling around with your iPhone most of the time I'm assuming. So <laughs> principal cinematographer. Okay. So CJ, get, how, how was, I guess let's, let's start with this whole, tell me how, how the three of you kind of all came together. Cause I mean, y- uh, you're not a filmer yourself. I know you, you probably done some skateboard stuff back in the day, right? But um, I, I, I didn't know Curtis until you introduced him to me. And then obviously I know T2. So how did, how, I and mean, this isn't the entire crew, but maybe kind of run us through like that whole setup of getting the why not group together. For sure. Yeah. I mean, my, my affiliation with film, you're right. It started with, with skateboarding. So when I was in high school, I rode for a shop and got flow for a few companies and we'd have to, you know, go out and film each other jumping off of stairs and jumping off of roofs and getting kicked out by <laughs> cops and everything like that. But really hadn't um, stepped too much into film in the ski world, aside from kind of doing the smaller little edits of like the World Telemark Day meetups we've done and, and stuff like that. But uh, both Curtis and I live over at Copper. And for me, last season, I was wanting to try to um, come up with a film idea for Telemark that's kind of outside of the native expectation of what a Telmark film is going to be, you know, not a low angle pal sort of film or, you know, an uphill backcountry granola eating sort of film either. Um, so I thought it'd be really fun to kind of bring all of these people together for just a meetup and in, in the park, you know, on tele gear. Um, and when I was starting to think about that, you know, the pressure immediately builds up on like, okay, I already want to do a project, which means I'm going to have to introduce it to people Like, how do I sign some insurance policy that I don't screw it up as much as possible? Um, And I had met Curtis, I think, very briefly, like over a beer or something the summer beforehand. But I knew that he was living over at Copper and he was doing a lot of the film stuff for Copper as well. Um, And actually kind of just reached out to his account with his with this idea of like, look, we're trying to get a bunch of tele skiers together at Woodward Copper. Um, You know, would you be interested in filming? So it was kind of like a lot of the things we've done at Tele Colorado is a pretty point blank like let's just see if we can <laughs> make this this work sort of thing 
Um, so that's how Curtis got brought on. And then for, for the skiing aspects of it, it's like, we all know Ty Dayberry, right? Like he's the, the resident dude that's been filming Telemark skiing forever and is always crushing it in all these films. So, um, he was obvious. We had Chris Hewitt too, who's living over, actually I think he was in Denver at the time, but, um, you know, he's in Colorado. He's Mr. Telly double front flip guy. Um, and that, that was super obvious. (laughs) And then, uh, I brought. I reached out to Greg Yearsley too. Uh, shout out to Hamdog 2069, who at that point was um, the main dude that won Kings and Queens of the Heel for our first year. So you know, for the people watching, if you haven't seen any of the Hamdog edits, um, it's highly recommended because it's an absolute blast. Um, so we brought him on, but it was kind of like you know we've got these three other people. Um, but it'd be rad to get you know at least one more. And I think I'd been seeing edits of T2 or. Mr. Mr. Taylor Hinnom, I guess there's no more Taylors on this phone, so we don't have to uh, <laughs> use, the, use the digits on it. Um, but I, I, I think I either reached out to to you, Josh, or to Taylor, just asking, like, look, we're getting, you know, Ty and Chris and Greg together to go film. Like, would you be interested? And he gave me a call, and um, it, it was just insane the amount of energy T2 had from the start. So I, I think all of it was very obvious choices that just kind of fell together very luckily. Yeah, no, I love that. And yeah, I remember when you were putting it together and um, yeah, it's cool to see what you guys have, have been able to do with it. And I'm, so I'm kind of curious now that we, now that we have full disclosure that Curtis is not a telemark skier, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, <laughs> I'm kind of curious. Um, like what was your take on this man? Like have you, I, I, I guess, um, let's see, you grew, you grew up in Tahoe. Uh, were you a North Lake yeah. or South Lake guy? Um, I was actually down in the valley. I was in Carson City, Nevada. Oh, okay. Um, it's always easier to just say I'm from Tahoe. Yeah, right, <laughs> no one right. Knows where Carson City is. They're like, oh, is that near Vegas? And you're like, no. Because <laughs> um, nobody so yeah, knows that like Nevada Tahoe. goes up that way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, I grew up. My dad worked at a small little resort in Tahoe called uh, Diamond Peak on the North Lake. Um, and they had somewhat of a park there, um, but it wasn't like huge or, you know, it wasn't like North star or heavenly or anything. Um, but you know, as I got older, I went to some of those bigger mountains and started to experience park and just like made a ton of edits with my friends, um, back in high school and, um, just kind of fell in love with it and had a camera and, um, knew that I wanted to, uh, continue pursuing that. So I moved out to Colorado and went to film school down in Denver, um, kind of did, you know, more like traditional film work, um, and, you know, being on sets and stuff. Um, but kind (laughs) of, that got boring. Um, so decided to move up to the mountains and, um, that's where I like kind of got more into ski cinematography and, um, yeah, just kind of fell in love with it. And yeah, my first year at copper, we actually had a couple of telemark skiers on the program. Um, I don't know if you know Steve Itell. He was at a. Um, he's out here. He's here in Colorado. Yeah, think, um, but he was actually one of. Oh, go ahead. No, no, no. I think I, th- I think I know Steve. I I can't remember. Is he no? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, keep going. Go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to so, slow us up here. Yeah. So he was, on a, he was on our model program, and I had another telly skier, and um, so it was sick. I mean, like it was just fun going out on powder days, and uh, you know, I. <laughs> One of my buddies uh, works at a sh- shop in Breckenridge that rents Telly gear, and so I have tried it a few times, and I'm horrible at it. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> a lot of face plants, and uh, so you work in an AMR or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's that's like shout out to <laughs> AMR Telly Stronghold in in, in old uh, Summit County there. So that's yeah, cool. Absolutely, I think it's the only shop that rents Telly gear around here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think you're right. So. Um, so I had, so had you seen it? I mean, obviously being a connoisseur of fine film, um, you've obviously seen lots of telemark movies before you got involved with this, right? <laughs> you know, I, I saw a couple and then, uh, once I met CJ, he, uh, he enlightened me. <laughs> um, yeah, that's well, but no, I really didn't have like too much experience with, uh, the telly scene. Um, just more the, um, Alpine scene. Yeah. Well, um, well, and that's, what's kind of funny is you're, I was kind of, yeah. And I was, I'm kind of busting your balls a little bit because it's like, it's been a while since there's been a telemark movie. So I was kind of curious, like if you had even <laughs> seen one, you know, and especially like park specific, 
Um, yeah. That. I mean, what was your thought on that? I mean, it, it sounds like you're a little. Uh, you you were uh, involved around Telemark's gears. Maybe it wasn't a super surprise, but like when you start shooting these guys, I mean that's a pretty that's a pretty solid group of dudes that actually know how to jump, how to slide rails. Like they've got a bag of tricks. Yeah. You know that's that's not like I would say your usual uh, Telemark uh, experience. I would say at most mountains, like where there's like you know four dudes just completely getting after it so did that was that kind of cool for you to see as a cinematographer right off the bat it was absolutely yeah you know i thought it was i mean i was just so blown away by everyone's skill set and um you know especially t2 just coming in coming in hot and heavy and just like throwing (laughs) down some throwing down like tricks that like would be like mind blowing just on alpine skis but let alone on that on telly on a telly setup too like you know, I think one of the craziest things was like following him into into our like large, you know, our large line that, you know, most of the pros do. And T2 just like throws this massive zero spin <laughs> nose grab. And um, yeah, I was just shocked, man. I was like, this is this is insane. I've never seen anything like this before. For all you old farts out there, a zero spin is where you take off backwards and you don't turn. And you you don't you do zero spins and you just land backwards. So there you surprisingly go. like one of the hardest <laughs> tricks to do. Yeah. So for Telly, yeah, it's a, zero spins are uh, zero spins are legit, right? Like because you're taking off switch and you're landing switch. Like that's it's it's yeah. uh, it's technically a sound trick in my book. So I like that. Yeah. Well, okay. I love it. That's a that's a good intro um, into. Uh, the T2 world. I'm going to have to call you T2 because I never call you Taylor, but uh, <laughs> yeah, no. ob- obviously your, your personal new film hot and heavy is coming out this year. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding, dude. Um, where does your name now? Uh, see, I know I was, I was trying to, I'm trying to seed the conversation here a little bit. Um, <laughs> tell T2, give us a little background because I, I, for anybody who has never met you, you literally are like a ball of energy. Where, where do you derive this source of uh, eternal stoke, if you will? Mm, I mean, I guess that's a tough question, but I think uh, it actually, hmm, when I, when I think about that, when I was in middle school, there was like a year and a half where I had this super rare disease where the the cartilage in both of my elbows cracked up um and i was like off for six months in each elbow and it was just like this most boring period of my life where i couldn't go ski i couldn't go bike i couldn't do anything so after that it was like man you just gotta enjoy it all like it's just so good and i mean that's the only thing that comes to mind but it's just there i suppose i love that man well and and so you're uh since we haven't had you on just to give a little background you're you're an east coast kid from new hampshire yeah you want to tell people a little bit about where you're from yeah yeah so i'm uh from uh key new hampshire it's like south western new hampshire for anyone who's familiar and uh my local hill is this place called granite gorge uh it was like one chairlift 500 vert and uh night skiing so you know i feel like that's where i really got my feet under me um, in all things snow sports because it was like, you know, parents would drop you off at 10 in the morning and you just ripped around with your friends until 8 at night. And, like, it, there wasn't much to ski, but you just, like, got so many laps in and had a blast. And uh, that East Coast definitely has a special place in my heart. Yeah, and I, and you guys, were you still skiing a bunch of park when you were – you were an alpine skier when you were growing up, right? Because – I guess you started telemarking well, right before I met you, right? Yeah, actually, I I was like, f- from age six to like my freshman year in high school, I was a snowboarder. And then I tried um, alpine skiing. I had done it like super young and I like was like, oh man, tricks on alpine skis look so cool. So I tried it again and I was like, oh man, I've been doing it all wrong. I got to swap back to skis. And then um, I had a, freestyle ski coach who was a tele skier and like he always said how it was like you know it's like just a great challenge there's always something new to learn so that kind of planted the seed in my head and then 
my dad and I came out to Utah and he was like, Oh man, you should try tele skiing. And, and I did. And I was like, okay, I'm sold getting rid of all my gear and switching to tele. And that was it. Yeah. I love that, man. And I mean, you're obviously an athlete, you know, just by default. Um, seems like, cause you're a climber, you know, skier yeah do it all kind of dude i mean what was it so now now like as you're kind of coming into this filming for why not and like cj you know hits you up and he's like hey do you want to come film you know with these other guys like i kind of walk walk us through it i mean what was it like when you guys met up at copper i mean because especially like if you're if you're skiing park um yeah i mean that's that's like one of the most legit places you can go because i mean some people even now have started scaling their parks down and i think you know coppers you know it's got woodward you know it's uh it's known as is sort of a training ground so i mean you know here, here you are you've got a uh you know a cinematographer you've got cj kind of directing all the pieces and then he's bringing all these tele skiers in like what was that like I mean, I was like just so incredibly stoked from the moment that CJ reached out to me because, uh, like I say, I'm a I'm a park rat at heart, and uh, coming out here, it's, it definitely put me out of my out of my zone trying to ski like big mountains out here. So, like knowing I was going to Copper and kind of going back to what I was used to and doing park skiing, I was like super excited, but at the same time, like quite nervous. I remember I packed. Um, like two pairs of skis and just like extras of literally everything uh under the sun in case uh anything were to happen and of course i forgot most of my stuff in my car the first night (laughs) i remember having to ask cj to be like hey man like i forgot my contacts can we go back i can't see tomorrow unless i get them (laughs) Uh, so like you know it's super awesome we get in the car and like ty's there and cj's there and uh emily was there and i'd never met any of these people and obviously i was quite nervous but um i was just like you know did not really know what to expect and uh then we go out the next day and like we just started skiing and uh i mean like throughout the three days that we were skiing it just got like easier and more fun and the more people showed up like i think the more stoked i got because i just love riding with other people and Like it was just such a dream to be able to like push myself with other telemark skiers and something I couldn't imagine until it actually happened. Yeah, no, that's, that's cool, man. And I'm glad that uh, CJ had extra stuff for you or at least took you back to your car for all the goodies. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, so CJ, like did this whole thing come out like how you expected it in the end from, you know, the, from the skiing and, in the in the purpose of why you wanted to make this thing you know i, I think to answer that would assume that i had an expectation to make <laughs> like, it go which <laughs> <laughs> which uh, i'm not entirely sure was true you know like i i had the idea in mind that i wanted to be able to get people together um i had the idea that i didn't want to totally f up the filming myself and to, to bring curtis on to have him be a part of it you know but in terms of ultimately what it was going to look like and the sort of clips we got, we kind of just flew through it. You know, it turned more into just a group of friends hanging out and skiing together um, and much less like directing, you know, here's what our intro scene is going to be. Here's what this jump should look like and everything else. And I, I think that's kind of reflected in the film where it's not so much of a kind of cinematic traditional ski film that you see, but to me it feels more like a skate film of, you know, a bunch of new and old friends getting to, to hang out together and have fun together. So kind of from that point of view, it, it came together how I wanted to. Well, and, and, the, and I'm kind of curious, like now kind of hearing your different pieces, you know, you guys are all kind of doing different parts within this project is like when you get to, was Denver the first premiere that you guys had on tour? Was that the, yeah, yeah, that was yeah, number was. one. So like, so yep. what, what was the, and any of you guys can answer this, but I'm just kind of curious, like what, what was the vibe? You know, you hear you've made this thing and you, you, you probably are ha- you know, you're all happy with it and you're stoked, but it's, I'm sure I know from experience, it's always nerve wracking. Like you're going to, all right, we're going to go put this on. We're going to, sh- we're going to do a show. And, um, I guess, how did you think it would end up? And then how did it end up? And like, what was the response to the whole, you know, to the whole project? 
I honestly was incredibly self-conscious about it. Um, you know, throwing events like this, we've chatted about this before. It's already, it's already nerve wracking when you're telling a venue, you're going to get so many people, but you don't really know if that's true. So for me, I was already nervous on how many people are going to show up to the premiere and everything else. But beyond that, and just going to why not, you know, like T2 was there and just absolutely threw down and was so fun to be able to hang out with him and see, you know, what he could do in the park on telegear and Curtis got all these epic shots. So it kind of turned into me like, I don't want to disappoint them on what I've done with the final product. It's like they could both do this incredible job and then I could completely, (laughs) completely botch the whole thing. They're like, cool, well, that was fun that we met up this one time, but uh, we might take other routes next year or something like that. Um, And two, you know, like I was showing, so for for the film tour, for people that weren't there, um, we end up actually having five films. Two of them was from this contest that Telmark Colorado threw, which was the year at a here contest where essentially we did an open submission for anybody anywhere to put together this tele edit and submit it to us. And then we had the, the film tour sponsors essentially pick out their favorites. So we could kind of bring in people that weren't already a part of the, the bigger kind of film tour. Um, and then following those two edits, we were doing uh, Marshall Thompson's King of the Lurk, which is this, you know, beautiful, big line, open pal field sort of cinematic film that's over in the Southern San Juans. And then, of course, um, Ty Dayberry's film, uh, Future Free Heel Part Two, which was, again, a very beautiful film. So for me, I I was incredibly nervous to, like, introduce more of this kind of raw skate style film in the midst of all of that. So i I, I was terrified. Um, I guess <laughs> T two and T two and Curtis can kind of answer like how they, they how they perceived on the other end. But yeah, I was I was definitely in the nervous nervous the whole time just to make the product good for them and make the product good for everybody else too. You know. Yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, like, I was, it's like your it's your baby too. You know. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but no, I thought it was cool. I mean, like the turnout was great. Like we had our own little private room down there at a brewery in Denver and, um, yeah, it was just fun to like see a, uh, the mix of films too. And like you said, like our more like skate park edit, you know, I think, you know, I think the fans really, really enjoyed it. And like people were cheering and stuff during, uh, certain scenes and, um, certain tricks and stuff. So. It was just fun. That was like actually my first time being part of a ski film premiere or like being a part of a ski film premiere. Um, you know, I used to like, you know, like always go to the level one premieres back in the day, but, um, you know, this was the first time like being part of one. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, Curtis, (laughs) what was the, what was the, uh, what was the group that showed up to check? Cause I, yeah, that's a, that's a good point that there was multiple short films. Um, yeah. I guess, and did you did you do all the editing as well, or the majority of it? No, no, CJ did all the editing. CJ did all yep. the editing. Okay, cool. So you were you were just doing the shots, and uh, CJ, did you do all the movie or all the music selection too? I, I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I'm kind of I'm I'm. Tell, t- what was the what was the crowd like? You know, because it makes me wonder. Because I, you know, uh, obviously way back in my history here we tried to show park skiing at a time where it really was hippies and granola people and the the (laughs) responses were interesting sometimes so i'm curious like the whole concept of why not was to kind of showcase this this style of skiing with these guys like what what was the response you know overall that you guys felt i guess and and this kind of goes for whoever maybe t2 how 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 was it for you you're a young dude what'd you think i i thought I thought people were pretty stoked. Um, and I mean, so at the, at the second premiere, a bunch of my buddies actually from growing up in New Hampshire came to it. So like, you know, they're still park skiers and they were like so stoked on it and like kind of had a concept of, you know, like a park trick and how hard it is and whatnot. And they were all like blown away by it. But like there were, there were a bunch of like, uh, dads coming up to me at the first one, just, being like bro that was so sick so like i think that <laughs> i think uh people were pretty stoked on it and uh uh like it seemed like people reciprocated it well and i mean personally i was just so excited to see it because i hadn't even seen it myself so like the first premiere was when i finally got to see everything so it was cool yeah i think it, that's yeah so 
Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. None I of them had say. actually seen it before. So it was Curtis and T2's first time seeing it um, <laughs> at the premiere when it was being shown essentially for the first time. And that that has very little to do with me wanting to hide it from them and, and more to do with me finishing the video like the morning of <laughs> the actual <laughs> premiere happening. <laughs> That's usually how it goes. <laughs> well, I, I'm glad to I'm glad to hear that it was a like a positive response because I you know and T2 kind of hit on this is people that understand tricks whether it's jumps or rails or any sort of I, I, I hate the word freestyle but you know like you know any sort of trick I guess I think people that understand what's going on there's like any sport you know I mean there's a there's a deeper appreciation for that. Um, hopefully it, hopefully there, I, I've always said this, I'm going to throw this out there too. Cause the argument's always been like, Oh, well, why, what's the point? You know, like your telemark skiers. Well, I love that you guys yeah. are doing this because, and I, I, historically speaking, jumping and telemark have always gone together. And I love that you guys are kind of continuing this on. I mean, you know, if you go back to the 1800s, all those people literally, one of the coolest things I think is. Uh, families uh, like on on the weekends used to build jumps together, and they would jump on their telemark skis, and uh, and it's like it's like CJ said, you know, you guys are like hanging out. It's like that's the vibe, you know. It's like getting together as, as a bunch of friends and doing tricks yeah. and trying stuff. I, I I love that. So I'm glad the glad the and response was good. The the title why not was uh, incredibly fitting because it is like yeah, it's it's definitely going to be harder to land switch on tele gear, but you know, like it's more fun. So why, why not? Like, and <laughs> I know growing up tele skiing and or when I did it in high school, like my buddies were always like, man, like what the heck, when are you going to switch back? And it was totally like, dude, I'm going to do this. There's no reason not to. So I thought that was fitting. Well, that's, that brings up, that brings up a good point T2. I mean, it, like, what is the point? I mean, from your perspective, I know my answer on this, but you know, uh, people I mean, people I, tend to look at it as a disadvantage for some reason they look at it like you're missing something you're missing a heel piece therefore yeah. it why, why? <laughs> and i understand like that's kind of the <laughs> point why not but for you yeah. like what what is what does it add to the tricks what is it what does it add to the experience of, of learning those tricks well i think like i mean wh- when you become and I, I would not say I'm there that yet, but if you're a real master in tele skiing in the park, you know, I think you can really like implement some telemark spice, I like to call it in the tricks, you know, like grabbing a nose or like giving a little bit of telemark flair. But the, the other part of it is like, you know, in between the features, like I, I think the telemark turn has a flow to it that's like similar to a trick. So, you know, you can do a trick same as you would on Alpine gear and then, but then in between the two features, you can throw in a tele turn and it's just more fun than an Alpine turn. So like it puts you at a disadvantage, but at the same time, like I think it can be an advantage and like open more doors for creativity. So. Very well said. I like that. Well, so, but uh, I'm oh, curious go- what you think. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, I've always thought that the, the, the if you don't look at Alpine skiers in, in the context of the question, then there is no disadvantage, you know? And I've always thought yeah, that it's like, sure. if you always put telemark against telemark, it, 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 to me, it's like saying, well, a snow, like it's like comparing snowboard to, uh, you know, snowboard to Alpine or like <laughs> snowboard to mono skiing. I don't know, like something where it's, <laughs> two, it's two different groups of people and, and, the people that telemark, I've always, I've always liked that um, telemarkers have the ability to do different things, like you're saying, like uh, telemark spice. I like that. Yeah. Uh, but but also like it, there's a certain uh, level of ability that's required. Like that's why I said like a zero spin on a on a massive mm-hmm. jump, like that's that's legit because if anybody who's taken off on a jump, I mean most people can't even take off a cat track backwards and land backwards. So, you know, going, going into a big, uh, park jump, you know, or a backcountry jump where you're taking off backwards. I think there's, there's a lot of technical ability there that people may not realize. So I think it's great. And I, and I think it's important for, for videos like this to be out there and 
hopefully inspire other kids. Totally. You know, so it's a, it's a perspective thing too. You know, like this, why not? Wasn't a film about like park skiers that happen to be on tele gear, right? Like this film was about telemark skiers getting together and riding park together. You know, like Josh, obviously you're a tele skier. Um, you know, Curtis, you've, uh, you've outed yourself that you're on Alpine, but we have set a deal when we do the, we, we've set a deal when we do the filming this year that we're going to put them on tellies and I'm completely <laughs> I'm so, I'm so down. the uh, I'm so cinematography down. to, for the purity of it all. <laughs> um, and you know, you look at, you look at T2 and you know, T2 is a telemark skier that loves riding in park, you know? So, and I think that's kind of the point too, especially looking at like, how people receive this is looking outside of like these tele meetups or tele premieres and looking at how people react to it online for people, you know, like on new schoolers, for example, that look at it and they're like, you know, I've always wanted to try telemark skiing and I kind of want to experience that turn, but I don't know if that's going to take out this aspect of my skiing lifestyle that I re- really enjoy, you know, i.e. park. Um, and that's kind of a big part of it too. So I, I think that's, that's really nice to see kind of, you know, these are tele skiers hanging out together and enjoying this kind of facet of skiing that people, I think tend to write off at least in, in this sport. Yeah, that's, it, it has, yeah. it has kind of gotten written off and that's, what's so funny is seeing how much time's gone by, you know, it's not like, uh, telemark skiers weren't doing stuff in the park. Actually, it's funny that, uh, that you guys were at copper too. Cause I was thinking that used to be in the mid two thousands. We all used to go out there for uh telemark U S nationals and it had a big air jump at the bottom. So big air competition, a slope style competition, <laughs> a tele cross competition. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, actually I think they had half, they had half pipe one or one or two years, which there was literally like, I think Dayberry was the only guy that was ever good at half pipe. There was maybe like one or two other guys, <laughs> but uh, I mean, to put that in perspective, like that, I mean, Dayberry was probably fifteen, maybe sixteen years old. So for for an old for an old cat like me, like I love hearing that you guys are still out there doing that. Uh, and yeah, I think it's cool. Like if you take the whole comparison thing out, that's when it, I think it gets interesting, right? Like you guys are skiing for each other, and then all of a sudden it evolves within that group yeah. and the people watching it, you know? So. Also, I think, uh, you know, for me and I think, uh, Greg and I were definitely chatting about this cause I think it was both our first meetups of sorts. And to be able to be like, dude, we're skiing with other tele skiers that throw down. Like this is just crazy. You know, like I- instead of being the, the only one doing it, there's other people around you. So it's like, Oh, I got to step my game up and, I think that's really cool because that's where progression happens is when you're feeding off each other. Yeah. So, what, so I guess w- talking about progression, I mean, so where, where does this, are you guys, is there another film that's in the works for Telemark Colorado? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I, I actually do want to make the why not thing kind of a yearly meetup and as kind of an opportunity to bring in more skiers too, you know, like, I don't want to make this thing about just T2 or Ty or anybody else. I wanted to make it more about kind of the community of telemark skiers that also want to hang out and ride some park and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll definitely be doing that this year. And, um, I've been trying to, to get together some other film projects. I mean, the, the film tour was just so fun. I think the response was so great between doing it in Colorado and Utah and Idaho and over in Wisconsin that for me, I, I feel like I want to keep this going. So now it's like, you know, you, you have this idea of doing this tour and producing a film and then it turns into like, now I feel like I need to keep doing this for people because it's something that they can look forward to, you know? So, so yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be getting more projects together for it. No, yeah, that's cool. Well, how, yeah. how was the whole, how was the whole tour thing for you guys? Like has any, did you guys do multi T2? Did you go on, multiple stops of the tour like did you actually yes, go I on went, on tour like that's i guess that's the yeah, question yeah yeah <laughs> I, I went to uh the two colorado stops and then uh you the tele colorado came to salt lake and there were two stops here and then i went up to driggs and it was just like so cool to you know be telling my roommates like oh i gotta go man i'm going on a on a film tour and uh but uh like that was the first telly film premiere i've ever been to so it was kind of a a double whammy for me where 
I got to watch a telemovie movie and I was in it. Um, but I mean, just like, like that's just one of my favorite things about telemark skiing is the community and like to go plop around in all these different hot spots and uh, especially going up to 22 in there their headquarters was really cool to, uh, you know, see where all these bindings are built that I've been riding on. So, uh, it was just so cool. And also a big highlight was riding on the back of Chris's motorcycle. (laughs) We'll we'll forget about that. (laughs) You rode on the back of a motorcycle. Yeah. Um, the the morning after the, the first stop, Chris had rode there on a motorcycle and I was like, man that thing is sick i've never ridden on a motorcycle and he's like you want to right now and i was like absolutely man like put me on it <laughs> so that was pretty sweet the happiest i've seen that kid yet and all the times <laughs> i've hung out with him is him riding on the back of chris Stewart's motorcycle we we have photos maybe that'll have to be the uh the podcast photos just oh, you two his grin just <laughs> <laughs> well so, so and, and curtis did you go on a couple of the stops or were you just at the denver one um, I went to the Denver one, and then we also had a stop up here in Frisco. Um, so I went to that one as well. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, with the full time gig, I didn't get to, <laughs> to didn't. live the rock star life and go on tour. Well, that, I mean, obviously, as we all know, going on tour is uh, five star hotels, very good meals, um, <laughs> comfortable beds. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, T2's basement <laughs> T2. <laughs> Any any other Well I guess uh, the motorcycle ride Sounds pretty good was there anything funky That happened on uh, On the tour That that's I mean I you can let it roll did, too uh, on here. It's just, you know, as long as you're cool with Talking about it, I'm cool, with, you know oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Putting uh, it out there CJ, I, I uh, was so stoked To uh, host CJ in my My lovely uh household that i get to stay in here uh with some college friends and uh one night we got to take uh the tracks which is the light rail uh and you can like do skateboard laps down the u so got to bring cj doing that and then uh brought him to my local dumpster spot uh but unfortunately (laughs) we struck out um you took you took him dumpster diving wait 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 (laughs) yeah i can't (laughs) oh Hang on, you're breaking up a second. What'd you say? T2, are you there? I'm here. Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I think you broke up for a second. Is CJ there? I don't know if CJ's there. I'm here. Is he? I think we've lost CJ. All of a sudden... Well, we're talking. We're talking. Here, well, T two, you can keep going. May, I, there's like no context to this, and and we just <laughs> we just talked about we're uh, changing the perception of Telemark, but now we're in a dumpster. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about dumpster diving? <laughs> what are you looking for? I mean, if we're here, I, I, I'd be happy to talk about it. Uh, you know, uh, I spent a a bit of time living in my car two falls ago, and uh, one of my buddies he started bringing me to dumpsters and we'd like cook big meals for our climbing friends that, you know, it could be like 15 of us and we'd score a whole meal. And like, he was like, man, I wish there was a little Caesars around here. And that like kind of stayed in my brain. And then I moved into this house and there's a little Caesars like block and a half away. So it's a uh, been my local spot. And, uh, when I went out to Colorado, I was like telling CJ and Ty and Chris about it. And they were kind of just like, what is wrong with you? Like, I can't believe you do this kind of stuff. So when CJ came out, I had to, you know, show him, show him how we, how we live in Salt Lake city. You had to, you had to verify your skill set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. totally. It, and then I was like in the dumpster and there was no, uh, no pizza. And CJ was like, you know, man, like I'll, I'll just buy us a pizza. <laughs> and I was like I was sick. It was the least I could do for him. He seemed so sad when we struck out in the dumpster. <laughs> oh man! Well, there's always next time. There's always, Cur- Curtis. Yeah. Mean, mean, <laughs> meanwhile, next meanwhile, Curtis is over there. Like, I am so glad I didn't go to that spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it turns out T2 is really good at uh, lime scooters too. <laughs> at our den, oh, we were yes. just mobbing electronic scooters around Wait, downtown what? Denver. Oh, like the rental ones. T2 is rent? like jumping off. <laughs> yeah, T2 is jumping <laughs> off curbs and doing donuts and. <laughs> I can't. But I for, I always forget that those are still around. They, those seem so dangerous because they're 
They are. Oh, people, They're menaces. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> I just it just seems crazy. Like, people are, like, at bars drinking, and then they're like, okay, cool, I'm just going to hop on this scooter and ride tandem, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or whatever. Just get rad on some Denver curbs. Oh, man, seriously. Or, I mean, uh, another huge highlight of the tour was uh, after the Frisco sh- stop, uh, Greg and I uh, got Why Not tattoos to, uh, you know, commemorate the the whole the whole deal so uh that was definitely a highlight for me oh where did you see and it's funny because when i met you i remember you, you showed me your first tattoo which is granite gorge right that's the first yeah. one yeah which is kind of yeah. out of the way because it's i remember you had to like pull up <laughs> pull up your shorts a ways to you know uh show yeah. this tattoo and, and, and you were telling me why why it was so i was like why did you put it up there and it was because it was because your mom right <laughs> Like, yeah, she was like, make, make sure to get it really high. So, you know, sorry, mom, but she already knows about this one, so it's where, all right. Where did the why not get put? Arm? Uh, leg? Uh, we both got it on our on our legs. Perfect. Nice. It's like inner thigh. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but there's, there's oh, always, it was awesome. There's always tattoo talk when greg's uh when we did the podcast i think i still owe him a ham dog tattoo and then cj was supposed <laughs> to give me a tattoo but I, that hasn't happened either so we'll have to we'll all have to get together and get a, a telemark colorado tattoo together again we'll just keep saying yeah, until it happens t2 and t2 and greg were my uh were my warm-ups and we had gone out the night before and you know had had enjoyed ourselves and or a few of us did and woke up in the morning t is all stoked about getting a tattoo greg's already i'm like i am pretty beat not sure if i want to be doing this and we had the frisco <laughs> premiere like coming up in a couple of hours but they were so hyped so i like got the machine out actually ran one on my leg i'm like all right we can do this but it's not going to be great zapped one on t2 which came out pretty well then started working on greg and hit this moment where my like arm just starts shaking and you're running this line i mean you know josh you know when you're running a tattoo line or something you don't on it Oh, you, you cut out a little. Else, oh, there you go. You're chopping. You're chopping up a little bit, CJ. <laughs> CJ. <laughs> CJ. No, CJ. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a technical difficulty. The line. The line got super jagged. Can you hear me? Re-establishing connection. I didn't, <laughs> the, the, didn't hear the internet here at Copper is fantastic. I know. This, We're like, this is why we have T2 and Curtis. I can just go on and let them talk. I'm not here enough. No, that's perfect. <laughs> I didn't realize you were the one that tattooed him. That's amazing. That's perfect. So, yeah. It, it blew my mind when he did it on his leg first. I was like, oh, all right. Wow. Never seen that before. Well, that's that's what's funny because people that buy tattoo machines, you'll you'll know you know their strong hand by the opposite leg that they have because it's like if they're right-handed, uh, it's like their left calf is probably all sorts of interesting stuff, which I would assume is correct. I, Am I right, CJ? I don't think CJ's oh, there. It says he's muted right now. There's no verification. <laughs> He's he's like I'm not even talking to you anymore. Well, all right. So <laughs> while we're figuring that out, um, yeah. So Curtis, um, I mean, I wanted to ask you too. Is just you know we've talked about going to the premiere and shooting this thing. I mean, what what was kind of the standout? I, we talked a little bit about the tricks in the in the movie, but I was curious, like, you know, I does that kind of scheme make you want to tell him, Marcy? I know you're getting roped into it regardless, but (laughs) (laughs) no, no, it does. I mean, (laughs) I'm kind of at a point, like I've been skiing since I was two years old and I'm kind of at a point where like skiing, it's fun, but it's, you know, become stale. Mm. And I just like, do you want to learn something new? So I think that's, that's kind of the most like appealing thing to trying telemark skiing because it's like, you know, complete, 180 and you're you know you're kind of forced to to turn different and move different and and do things in a different way um so yeah i don't know i mean i've you know i've tried snowboarding a couple times too and telly and telly skiing so i don't know i might pick it up and uh and roll with it well that's i i feel like oh go ahead t2 chime in Oh, I, I just remember uh, trying, I feel like I was definitely like trying to give Curtis the sales pitch on the lift at <laughs> one point or another, you know, as one good telemarker should do. So <laughs> It's kind of, I'm curious, 
with Curtis, like one thing that I notice with people, see, you're at the point where, like you said, it's, it's something stale. Um, and, uh, I think CJ is trying to get back in here, but I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> says he's says it's, so if, if you're here, I am suffering signal issues right here, but you sound like you guys are having a great conversation. Oh, I'm just I'm just keeping it going. We're talking about we're talking about Curtis probably being the next best telemark skier on the planet. And uh, um, no, I was gonna ask Curtis too. Like, it, 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 I think that's a good transition point is the stale factor because I I always say it's like you know, it gives, it opens up the mountain again, right? Like it gives you something totally new to try. But, uh, do you, do you, are you at a point, this is, this is research I'm doing here. So this is i I'm curious because it seems really hard to get people to telemark ski when the snow's good. So if the snow's good, do you think you would be less likely or more likely to want to go tell them I ski that day, hit AMR and get that telly rental and go out. Yeah. Or are you going to wait till the snow's <laughs> shitty? Yeah. I mean, especially this season, I feel like any new snow, like I would rather be on telly skis. Oh, like, really? You're, you're kind of guaranteed face shots. I mean, when you're dropping knee, you're that much closer to the ground. And, um, you know, I think that was like the beauty of shooting with Steve and some of the guys over at AMR all the time was like, we could go out on a three inch pow day and like make it look like it was a foot deep, you know, cause we're just getting face shots every turn. Um, so I mean, that's, that, that that's like why I'd want to pick it up is for, for those powder days. T- spoken like a true ski marketing professional. I like that. <laughs> I, I, you nailed it, man. Cause I'll tell you, there's not a lot of telemark skiers that are on the, are on the marketing speed dial at some of these mountains. Yep. And if you uh, marketing people out there, if you want good deep powder shots and you don't get a lot of snow, you know, you know where to find it, find those knee droppers in your area. So <laughs> yeah, CJ, CJ and I went out on uh, like right around new year's. We had a, we had a little storm and I hit him up that morning and I was like, Hey dude, you want to come out and get some marketing shots? And he was like, absolutely. And like went back to the, one of the back bowls of copper and you know, just made it, made it look way deeper than it actually was. <laughs> just butter in that muffin. I slightly used, but it was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, 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 <laughs> That's funny. I think I saw it. There was, I think Mike Douglas posted something on like Instagram today and it was literally like that. It was like, six in, this is what you can do with a six inch day and a good skill set <laughs> and he's just like i mean it, it's like overhead his skis are sticking out there's no body even in frame anymore it just looks yeah. like the deepest day and it, it, it's kind of like tricks it's like that's a trick of the trade you know is is uh making it look deeper than it is a lot of times so <laughs> yeah fake fake it to make it fake it to make it yep <laughs> don't ever believe instagram people it's it's kind of like uh calling <laughs> calling the snow report and thinking that it's accurate so um yeah well cool well our, cj where are we going from you cj do you have a signal are you there i <laughs> I'm I, I think so i'm like hugged in a, i'm just like running around frantically in this building while you guys are talking and people are watching <laughs> me but i'm like hugged in a corner here for for everybody's visual so hopefully this one will work out yeah so well, uh, so where are we heading with this thing, man? T- t- what do we what do we need to touch on for for the upcoming, or is there anything else we wanted to cover on uh, on the tour and um, or anything Telemark Colorado related? I guess. Yeah, I mean, like as always, I can't thank all the people that come to these events enough. You know, like if they weren't showing up, it ends up just being me, Curtis, and T two. You know hanging out, having a beverage and watching the films ourselves. So, you know, go to the Denver premiere and and sell it out. I think we had like over a hundred people there, which was the fire code capacity. Um, And to go to all these different venues, big and small and have all these people show up is just absolutely magical to me. So, you know, that's kind of, that's the thing that I appreciate the most about you is, you know, people showing up and being a part of it. And that definitely motivates me and, and Brian and Eric to keep on doing these things. I'm sure, you know, for T2 and, and Curtis, they get to see, you know, what's coming from the work they've done, which is, is pretty motivating, you know, as well. Um, you know, the, the rest of this season, we're finally continuing on with more of our meetups. So we've been doing a bunch of demos everywhere. We just finished up Telefestivus over at Monarch, um, another Telefestivus over at Durango. 
Um, and we're kind of pulling that all around. And uh, I think we're going to try to make Hawaiian Nationals this year, which uh, will be assuming happening after this podcast. I don't, but Josh, have you been to that before over at Sun Valley? Funny, funny enough, I, I have never personally been. I'm really good friends with uh, Danny Walton, who was the previous guy that I think he even took it over from another guy and then he passed it on to the guys that are doing it now. But uh old Telly Tay said the whole FHL crew might be there too. So you guys might you guys might be having a oh, little, hell yeah. You might be having a Hawaiian yeah. fiesta up there. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, that'll that'll be an absolute That's, blast. But uh yeah, so we got that going on, trying to get more of the demos going on in the clinics for everybody. Um, we've got, again, thankfully you've been plugging it, the Kings and Queens of the Heel. Oh. So, this is Eric. See, we lost you again, uh, dude. You, you're not, you have to stay in the corner, CJ. <laughs> can you hear me now? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, we can. It's kind of, it's kind of splotchy, dude. It's, <laughs> um, <sighs> I'll I'll fill it in. Kings and Queens of the Heel. It's a, I'll, I'm not going to do it as good a justice. So if CJ, if it connects, feel free to take my thunder here. But it's a video competition. Uh, there's a booklet that you can download. It has different challenges that are meant that are meant for. See that beep? Do you guys hear the beep when CJ tries to get back in? Yeah, I heard it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is gonna be like the funniest podcast. It's like CJ trying to get back in. Can't can't get back in the conversation. <laughs> Um, so there's a, there's a booklet you can download and it's for all skill levels. So like there's, there's like food challenges. Like I think I mentioned on the podcast before, it's like, you know, how many breakfast burritos from McDonald's can you eat on the way up? Uh, there's some, um, beverage challenges, I think is, uh, the wording for liability purposes. Um, adult beverages possibly i don't know i i i I don't have it in front of me so i'm not sure and then there's like trick challenges so kind of like some of this some of the trick stuff that's going on too um i don't t2 have you done have you actually done kings and queens no i I haven't no Um, are you gonna do it this year no 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 you're not gonna do it Well, I've been I've been trying to do some some filming on my own to create uh, my own little project. So it's uh that's been my main source of energy. Although, if I had unlimited time, I would love to do it all. Yeah, it's it it it. I I love that they're I love the the kings and queens of the heel thing. But it's like it's so crazy that uh you kind of have to it it takes some effort. You got to have a good crew. That's why it's yeah, fun it seeing the groups get together. Um. And funny enough, like Curtis, I was just thinking about, uh, um, we were talking about ham dog 2069. You met Greg, I guess. Cause you filmed with him. Did you, did yep. you, uh, have you seen the ham dog stuff that they put out on that? I it's, think so. Do you know what a ham dog is? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you don't No. Oh dude. No. So like supposedly, <laughs> and supposedly in Australia, they have a hamburger, with a hot dog through the middle and some, and there's supposedly like a bun that matches it. <laughs> so you can imagine like, <laughs> it looks like a, it looks like a, <laughs> Oh my God. I'm like laughing. Just thinking about it. Um, it looks like a, a hamburger bun with like almost like a Saturn ring coming across it or something for the hot dog. <laughs> Anyways, look it up. I don't know if it actually exists because I had some Australians on the podcast and they were like, what the hell are you talking about? This ham dog thing. <laughs> like that's not an Australian thing. So, so anyways, the point being Hamdog 2069, they actually had a couple of people on their team that I don't think were actually tele skiers uh, until they started doing the project. So there might be hope. Maybe maybe you guys can yeah. put a team together, you know? There you go. I don't know. They do have that crazy scene where they make the ham dog. That's true. Yeah. And it's something else. That 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 year was pretty funny because they like skin. <laughs> they like skinned into the bar. I think if I remember right, there was like some weird, yeah, weird yeah. ones. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> uh, that's crazy. All right. Well, um, trying to think. Uh, what I did? Did C, Did CJ ever come back? Is he there? <laughs> I think I'm back on again, <laughs> dude. I I ran it, bro. You, you're fine. You can just pop in whenever you want, dude. <laughs> 
<laughs> I appreciate that. I'm just trying to make orders out here. That's, well, I assume every time I reconnect, this is like the fifth and sixth time I've been on the podcast now. So I'm officially the, uh, the record holder. You are the right. <laughs> <laughs> I gave everybody the lowdown on uh, Kings and Queens, how to get the oh, book. Thank you. How to get the book lit. Uh, it's for all types of tele skiers. So there's technical challenges all the way to the food and beverage challenges that people can do. Um, there's even like mogul challenges. There's like ski backwards stuff. I mean, it, it's, it's for everybody. So you should, everybody should participate. You can, you can do it as a team. I think you can do it solo, right? I guess. Is that accurate? Oh yeah, for sure. We've, uh, we've had a few people that have actually submitted solo edits. Um, one guy has been doing it since, uh, since day one, and then I think we had one or two new solo ones in last year. Um, we've been getting tagged in a bunch of stuff this this coming season or this current season, so I'm really stoked to see you know how many different submissions we get and everything else. Because right now we're at uh, we've got Hamdog 2069 won it the first year, and then uh, they got second the second year, and then NWTN got second the first year, and then first the second year. So uh, kind of a Colorado rivalry happening. So we'll see if uh, one of them takes uh, takes the throne this year or if we get uh, some new team that comes and <laughs> takes it all from them. So, um, so yeah, I'm stoked. It's been really cool to see you know the videos of all these crews and kind of what all these different tele crews and communities are, are throwing together just you know with this kind of guidebook and what they're making of it. Yeah, no, I love that I you're know doing that. I know that there's a local Alta crew that's uh, – been filming for it and i think half of them weren't tele skiers before doing king of the heel so i'm stoked to see what they do yeah you gotta and those are the ones you gotta watch out there's always like the sleeper cells of non tele skiers that are like end up being like the best tele skiers ever of all time oh, <laughs> for sure so you gotta watch I know, out i was just for telling them. cj we just hosted a free ride competition here at copper a couple weeks ago and uh, the kid that won first place uh, for like whatever it was, the 15 to 18 year old division was a tele skier and really? from this group out of Vail that's just been crushing it. Yeah. Oh, I mean, was he was just like hucking cliffs and throwing threes and backies and the whole night. Was he a Vail, so. Vail Mountain School kid maybe or something? Uh, I want to say it was like the Gore, Gore Mountain yeah, that, tele club or something. Yep, totally. That's the one. Huh. Yeah, yep. that, it's crazy. Yeah, there's they've yeah VMS has had a, a team for a long time. I think I just saw them. I think it is Gore because they've they had these blue jackets and it had Gore on the back of it. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had a whole career. There was like yep. there was like ten of them and just all all crushing it on the on the free ride course.